I guess this would be video number eight. Video eight, part two of the front end rebuild on the 72. So, to me it was just like a few minutes. But I took, uh, hopefully uh, it did take me very long to get this video uploaded between uh, video seven. When we tore it all down and all that. So, anyway, uh, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start putting uh, uh, triple tree assembly back together. And uh, go through all that. Got everything cleaned up. I'm just about to grease it. Uh, what I did on the in here is I took my Dremel. Yeah, it was a sanding disc and, and just clean the rust out. Very simple to do. Oh crap. Dropped it in the floor. Oh, that didn't be a nothing. Just this. Take it in there like that. And rent, 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 and that's it. Got it all nice and clean. What I'm going to do, I've already counted my balls. I've washed my balls, so I don't have any dirty balls. I'm not going to put no dirty balls in here. So anyway, i got 21 in one pile and 21 in the other. So, I'm going to apply some grease up in here and here. I am going to try a new method and put them on here, which I've seen some people do. And shove it up in there and get with it. Now, one thing you got to remember is this part up here is your race for your outer race for your upper part of your uh, triple tree or forks you got one side it's a little bit got a little more surface area more radius and one side is a little less the side that has more radius is the side that goes into your bearings so you want to make sure that you install that correctly because it's it does not match. It's not a mirror image on each side. So you want to make sure that this side it sticks out further. More radius goes down into the bearings. And then we got the nut. Now the plastic is split. I have replacement, but I'm not going to use it. This one's holding together real good. So I'm going to, until I get to around to fully restore this bike. After I do my animal green bike, then uh, we'll worry about it then. So, I uh, just take, if you got like a little brush of some sort, and you want to brush the grease on, or you just like to pretend you're in kindergarten and finger paint it on there, that's up to you. So, I put some grease on that. I'm going to put some up in here in the bottom. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it pretty re religious, but uh, not too damn carried away. But uh, this is where your load is down here, and all your abuse. You know, you want to make sure. If it, if I didn't have enough grease to do both, I'm gonna grease the bottom. Just because. Uh, that's where all your uh, wear and tear is applied to most of the time it, for most sake is on the bottom set of bearings so if you're going to put a new set in or you only got one or you got 21 balls just put them in the bottom put your new ones in the bottom but anyway I'm going to go around here by hand stick them in that grease uh, you want to make sure they're all the way around. If you drop, probably the best thing is not to have this too damn high off your work table. So if one falls out, you can catch it really good. I'm just going to put these on there and I'm going to set it back down. And I do got to apply some grease to the top and put the balls in the top. But this, you can do it this way. Uh, that way gravity doesn't work against you. I used to do it 
just sticking them in the frame and uh, had a few setbacks on that with them falling out but I saw a video somewhere where somebody did them like this and it seemed to be just the best way to do it so I'm gonna try it for the first time you're gonna watch me and you're gonna laugh and think that I'm an idiot okay they're sitting in there all nice and pretty try not try to set it down there level with some some way uh don't bang it around too damn much it's gonna fall out but anyway we'll put some grease up here uh now you can knock these races out and change them i guess if you can get replacements if you i mean if you're a stickler to put every damn thing you can on there new but why anyway oh i guess that uh on another note i should be using blue paper towels but hell since everybody is stockpiled toilet paper and paper towels uh they have actually gone in and hit and wiped out the blue shop towels in like in the automotive section in Walmarts. I uh, don't know if they've hit the auto parts stores for them, but I mean they've hit the they've gone ape shit crazy of hitting the mechanic work gloves and at Walmart. So you know, I mean these people have gone gone hoarding stuff. Oh, this Corona junk. They, uh, they've gotten, it's gotten so bad that they had to go back there and, and clear out all the damn blue shop towels at my local Walmart. So, I got a few here and there, but uh, I ain't really using them. I just kind of got them on reserve. I guess I get me another six pack of them. I'll get a six pack somewhere, but I uh, don't know where I'm gonna find any right now. So you may have already experienced that at your local Walmart's, uh, or wherever you shop. I don't know about Target. If I guess Target might have some stuff. But I don't shop at Target. I ain't a Target close enough for me to spend the gas to go. And that's where rich people go. I ain't rich. I'm just smart. Anyway, I guess I lost the ball out somewhere. Uh, damn it. Okay. I guess I got one ball that I might have. Might need to go down in here. Let me see if I can't work it in. If you short one ball, short the top. Don't short the bottom. So I got to careful. Got to do as much carefuling as I can. I don't. That I'm not going to be able to get that in there. Unless it does go up here. Yeah, it, go, it went up on top. Uh, Y'all can breathe. But anyway. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put a little grease on this ring here. Since I've got grease on both sides of that. Uh, just put a little on there just for you know, a little more than that. Okay. Now I guess the point where you kind of want to clean your hands off, clean it before you get get messed up. Put 
Make it that mid bottom hole careful. And then all up in there like that. Put your top brace on. Do it careful like so you don't slam it down in there and the ball shoot shoot out and hit you in the face or something. So then you take your top cap, your top nut, or you gonna call it, thread it on there. Uh, you could put some lube on the threads, but this goes on. But anyway, you run it down there like that. Let's see how we do it. It's holding. Ouch. And that feels a lot better than it did last time. But I'll show you what I got. I got a spinner wrench. And uh, it hooks into that just fine. And I'm going to tighten it up. And it's going to seem like it's going to be too tight. But I'm just trying to put enough preload on there that, you know, That'll keep it from uh, just flopping around while I'm working. <laughs> Ain't nothing we hate worse than the damn thing just flops around and pinches your hand in something. But that's how I do that. Uh, it's pretty basic and simple. Simple mechanic skills. So Anyway, uh, I did, when I ran the screwdriver in this uh, up on top earlier, I chipped the paint but I ran it up on the bottom of this one and it did fine. It, it came out a hell of a lot easier than that side, but I didn't chip any paint. So that's just, that's something you may want to take, take in to write it down in your notebook. Uh, look from the bottom if you don't want your chip paint to be seen. You know, like if you got it repainted or powder coated, and you had some issues with in and out with your forks and you don't want your to get uh, your paint powder coat to get chipped just do it from the bottom with your screwdriver but anyway uh, there's more to be doing uh, I got to do the cleaning up the forks I took the one apart in the last video and I got to do this one so I might have to knock all this uh, crud off I had laid it over and it's dripped all the oil out so this is this side it came out a lot easier but I still got to get all this rusty crusty off there slide the spring out disassemble it so it'll come out hopefully just as easy as or easier than the left hand one did uh, but this one's not as dirty and nasty, but I'm going to get everything cleaned up, like the springs and the shaft and, and this and polish all this. And we'll go do the, putting it back together with new fork seals. I got to find them in my bag of tricks down there. And we'll also, uh, probably before we put a whole lot of crap on here, is uh, we'll get to the, We'll just go ahead and replace this piece here. But I got to go in the house and take me a little. I'm going to take care of some business in there. And uh, I'll be back here in a minute. And we'll be, uh, I guess, we'll just jump right on to replacing all this. Not the wire, but just the boot and the thingy hole, the whole plug all right that's been a little bit since we since we've seen each other i've only done one of these this is or, damn that's the right hand side okay yeah we'll, we'll be fine anyway yeah this is the right hand side no shoot left hand side left hand because of that that locks into your breakup i've been polishing on this uh i have i've been at war with the polisher over there 
stupid Harbor Freight polishing wheel, the great big ones like these. These are a joke. That hole is too damn big. It's not centered. It's shaking all my damn grinder all over the damn place. And uh, I've. Oh, anyway, let's get started, boys and girls. There. All this is cleaned out, it's polished. Yeggity, smacky. Anyway, I am going to apply some. I'm not wearing these gloves because of anything else, but I just want to keep my hands clean. But I'm going to put some grease on these just because I want to. That way, until I get some earl in there, uh, we ain't got to worry about it scraping and scratching walls in there. Anyway. You want to take something and poke that uh, that top piece in there. That piece. It went down there real easy. I've got my new seal. That's a used up seal this is my new one all the way from chp some time ago anyway you want to lube your seal up i'm just using some red tacky grease put some grease on the seal now you're going to see one side of the seal has got a spring in it that's your cup side of the seal this is your wiping outside part of the seal that wipes it's got that little wiper lip it does not go down in there it's going to go in there like that i've installed enough damn seals in my my career to know so anyway we're gonna uh put a little grease on the fork i call it a shaft but whatever I'm used to doing hydraulic cylinders. I kind of lubricate all that up so I can get the seal down in there. Okay? Or you. Whoever's working on it. I nagle that seal around there. Roll it. Rock it. Just don't try to do it square like. Sometimes they don't want to. They don't agree with going down there square. So. Yeah. I, I already polished up that as much as I could. So let me grab a grab some stuff. And you'll say, oh no, you got a screwdriver. And he's gonna cut that seal. Well do it just a little bit. It's going down in there. It's clean. It's uh clear and nothing. I'm trying to do it gingerly. get a punch but hell this screwdriver is not sharp I'm not knocking the hell out of it you just want to do this because uh, you don't want to you want to do it easy because you don't want to call call up and order any more seals there ain't nothing that pisses you out worse than screwing something up in the middle of a job so you know unless you ordered unless you ordered half a dozen or so unless you got a whole drawer full of these damn things, you tear one up and grab another one, but just work it, work it. I'm not doing much as far as damaging the seal at all. It's got a little marking, but you know. Uh, I think that's all the way down in there. Let's get the snapper in. Okay. And we gotta find the snap ring. I had it a while ago. Shit, had it all laid out. Oh my goodness. There it is. Right where I left it. 
Put that on there. It don't matter which way. Smells the same. Snap ring pliers. Work that down in there. And I'll show you if you don't have the seal, in, seal down in there enough, you always tap that snap ring until the snap ring pops in. Work it around. I think I heard it pop. So, yeah, it's in there. Didn't like much. There you go. There you go. And I can see where it's open right here. That the ends of the snap rings are down in the in the groove. You just take go around there and, and pry against it like that to the outside of the tube to see, you know, if you don't get it to drop in there anymore. And it did in one spot, but other than that, that's it. So, what's next, T-Rex? Uh, this part. Remember the deeper part goes up. This is the shallower part. This is the deeper part. Wham! I polished all that up. Want to go? And I'll put it. Just put that down there like that. Uh, to some degree, I think we ought to slap it on the bike. Because whatever it's worth. That's got to go on there. So we got to put this on the bike. Shove that up in there. It's got all this plastic bushing stuff that goes up in there. Anyway, let me get you situated on the bike. Carry you around here. Let me get you. Get you nauseous. I know I got some glare. None of these LED lights up there, and they're, they're really doggone bright. I did kind of shine the, these, you know, shock skirts up a little bit. But, uh, you know, I think we were going to do the wiring boot over there. But, uh, we'll do this. Show you how to install it and I jump over there. Not necessarily all the water that you think I'm supposed to be doing it in. But anyway, you got that in there like that. Uh, if you want to put some grease on there, it's probably got enough. But uh, I'm going to do it like that. Now, this guy don't know what he's doing. Sitting there in the toilet watching me work on this. Or you sitting there in the toilet watching your toilet paper. <laughs> mm. so I'm guessing I'd give them a screwdriver and spread that apart. Soon. Need that in my hammer. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Don't fall. Walk right out. Yeah. Well, I know it ain't up there all the way. It's that rusty, rusty part of it. Is that doing any good? <laughs> I ain't much of a left handed hitter. <laughs> anyway, I guess just spread it on open some more.
There we go. Maybe. Damn. Dude, priest. Channel locks over here. And then number, what number channel locks are these? Four tens. Yeah. Some scratches in there. So, I know it's right there where the rusty part is. Just giving me the damn blues. Now let's put some uh, spray on there. Spray that. Oh, I'll put some grease on it, but... Oh, gosh. And it's hard to get a grip on it when it's slick. i get my dead blow. I gotta get this... This part and that part on the same plane. Come on. Let's spread it apart again. Oh gosh. Ouch. That did not feel good. And it's not wanting to stay in there. For whatever reason. not try to hit the damn stem. Gosh. You get me a different screwdriver. Some of them screwdrivers got a that lot they got the serrated part on them. This one's got a busted tip but they're serrated. Some that one's slick. So it's not holding. There you turd. Fall out. Man. I don't know what should go up there. Man. It just wants to be a big pain in the ass. That's all. Oh, man. Oh, this is pissing me right off. spot. I may have to take it over and grind it. Do something. That's... Now let me, uh... Let me take it back out and go grind the hell out of it. Hang on. Hey, howdy, hey. Okay, this is what I used. I thought, well, yeah. It's not grinded with sandpaper much. This is kind of like some kind of fiber wheel for rust removal or pain or whatever. I uh, just hooked it on my die grinder and went to town. Knocked it down. Got a little grease on it. So here we go. Here we go. Oh my God. That made a difference, dude. Ah. Imagine that. Sitting in there and you... Chomping the bits. Is he ever gonna get it figured out? No, I can't tighten that bolt down because it's a damn screwdriver, right? Yeah, watch me. 
<coughs> what I was doing there is knocking the handle off the screwdriver. Anyway, there you go. Went up in there. There you go, come on. Come on there, biscuit butt. Way up in there. Anyway, let's uh, we can use the triple tree top to kind of get things up in there. That will set our depth. We put that mud on there. Well, that's supposed to. That's supposed to go in there or something. No, I didn't shroom the hell out of that. Hmm. Oh well. Okay. That'll get me close. I think it's just like that. I just need to tighten down on that. Fumbles. There. That's done. I actually let that part. So we need to wipe this up. Maybe maybe if my camera started working better, showing better pictures and stuff. This, this is just a chrome sleeve. It didn't take much. But anyway, you get the gist of the forks. That's about it. And I finish all that and I put my top clamp on it. And if I got any other problems, I'll figure them out. But I'll polish this piece up. Probably scrub it down and polish it. Hopefully I can win the war pretty soon on this one. But anyway, uh, I'm going to bring you back in just a second and we'll get on that wire. I'm going to knock that daggum wire problem out. Okay, guys. Man. Uh, I went about crazy a while ago because I knew I had this piece on the three of my I, I ordered. I don't know that I don't get no stitches. Yeah. I got it better. I guess better use my dikes. Oh yeah. Well it's safer. Ah. I have an eyeball. Almost. Man, that stuff's just so damn dry. Rotted. A lot easier. A lot easier to get it off that way. I don't have any scissors out here. I don't think. Anyway. Not to tear the damn wires up. I cut them. Cutting the wires would be a lot better than trying to cut myself. That 39 cent is that though now. Almost got me one. Let's pull that one down. Mm. Come on. I'm going to smash them with a hammer. It'd be fun, but I'm not a chance. It would just crumble if I whacked it with a hammer. Okay. Now, let's take this damn thing on. Well, maybe we just get it down in there. I'm not worried at all. 
Not destroying it. More for the trash. All the way from, all the way from here, uh, wherever it was, Japan over there. Anyway. First time it's ever been out in its life. I don't know if I'm going to worry about this part right here. And that's... Damn. Right. I think... I know this is longer. And I just need to go so far with it. So if I just go about... About like that, it'll slide over that. It's not heat shrink or nothing. But I'm just going to slide it down in there and it'll keep for now. Uh, or I'll slide it on there as far as I can. But I want this edge here to be, well, be as clean cut as I can. Let's just see what happens. I may have to totally redo this. I'm going to slide in big ones in there first. <coughs> Dust. That one or something. It wouldn't do no good to be doing no fish taping. Maybe I should have laid this on the heater over there. It's like 40 something degrees outside and rainy today. So. Man, what a pain in the ass this is turning out to be. Hey, I'm just crumbling the hell out of them. Anyway. I don't know how long this is going to take me. I meant to bring y'all back. So. Maybe I'll shove something in there that keeps it straight. Yeah, I can get it all in there. I think if I just keep it like that, maybe slide a single. The Japanese, they knew how to do it. They had them a system. Anyway, you probably don't have as much problem as I do. Yeah, kind of, kind of like stop that vacuum cleaner hose. If you ever dealt with that. I think I'll probably just go ahead and hack it off. About five inches, about right there. Because the time it's all on the headlight, it's, uh, I mean, if it's too short, I just grab the, grab another one over there. Oh, they weren't very expensive. Oh man. Well, it's just, you know, you only got so much sticking out till you go in the bucket. So, just the fact if it would stay, stay, you know, fat and round, 
we'll be all right. And we keep our wires from getting all twisted up. You know, good. And see, I can net wires out. We'll put a put a little stretch on that wire. Sneak it down through there. I'm hacking this job, so if you're gonna do it, you can do it the same way or different. But you know, I get to the point where I've, I'll do a full restoration on this one down the road. We'll be smelling smelling a lot better then, and I just get in there and tape that up. I may have messed up on this. Should have, the, should have put the big head ones in there first. But if it all goes well, it's right there. And it's the red wire. And I'm just kind of. I don't know how to get the needle loaded. Hang it out. Just work with it. Shake it. Poke, poke and shake. There we go. Have to do that with it for a minute. Hope I don't have to pull any skinny wires out. Probably will. And I think let's uh, let's trim this off right here. Any kind of. Any kind of hangnails. Get them hangnails off there so the damn thing will go through there. Probably should have put some spray in there. Lube it up. I think that I'm going to have to pull some skinnies out. There goes the skinny. One more. Leave my neutral light. There we go. Come on, turd. Okay. Let's bring that one back around. Pull some stretch out in it. And we gotta put the rubber boot plug on it in it. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Right there, come on. Come on, turtle, stick your head out. There we go, there we go. Those are not coming out. I hope not. I'm gonna double feed these suckers through there. Anyway, anyway, come on. You can do it. Come on. Stick your head out. There we go. All right. And that'll just go right, right down in there like that. We got enough sl sloppy slack in it. Let's uh, give it the right curve. Okay, so it wraps around that way. Be just fine like that. Yep. Yeah. Where is the rubber? I just had it. I bet I put it back in the box. I had an episode over here a while ago. I couldn't find the crap I was looking for. Yeah. I've got hundreds of dollars worth of parts over here. Trail, buddy. There it is. Uh, this is the grommet. It's Honda number three two nine eight four dash zero nine eight dash triple O. 
That means three zeros. Okay? There we go. Fat cow Latin. Now there's a there's a way it goes. The inside is smaller and the outside is bigger. And this hole is kind of angled like that. So you want that wire to go be angled this way going out to the front. And that's what we're going to work on. So it's just a matter of stuffing that sausage in that little tiny hole, you know. Well, all these big ones in there first. You know, they're, they're big and bossy. They get to go first. So, wing, wing, wing. Let's put some, uh, slickum spray on there. Ah. Slick it. Slick it up. All the way down there. They slide. Okay. If I all the way up there. I'm not going to try to pull my. I'm going to just try to push that in the hole. It'll go. If you lube it up enough, it'll go in the hole. Ha uh ha. -huh. Anyway. Anyway. That's how I did that today. I don't think it grums exactly the... Well, yeah, it is. It's made just the same way. Of course, it's Honda. Who else would, who else would have thought that? But I think I got enough free, free dangle out of them wires to go up in the headlight bucket. Wah, wah. If so, I can tug it out a little bit. If not... I mean that all that really looks nice. Sprayed oil all over the motor. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. That's just something I've been wanting to do for a while. That's the first time I've ever done one and it seemed to be okay. Uh, I'm not gonna leave it out in the rain, get rained on or nothing, so you know, you get older you take better care of stuff because it's your dime. It's not mom and dad paying for the parts or grandpa or grandma but uh, you know what i'm saying when it's your dime you damn well start taking care of it better and if you can't if you can't afford to fix it up don't tear it up so anyway yeah this is going to turn out to be a, a peach you know for what it is it's my rider so i'm going to work on the other fork uh, do that to, I'm going to, I'm going to hit these little, I don't know, chrome rings, collars, duber hickeys. I want to kind of hit them, clean them up, and they go back down over the tops with, you know, the skirt being in there. You put it on there like that. It's got an O-ring, a rubber cushion on one side, so that that goes down okay and you can clock it i don't know which way you want to clock you know because you got an open spot and an open spot to clear the the bottom of your triple tree so clocking it whatever direction is up to you so then you put your you know we'll we'll polish this up a little bit clean it up get in here and it's you know, make it look good. Hell, if I had paint, I'd probably paint them, but that's a long process. And you just put that sucking bitch up on there like that, so. Uh, maybe that's what I needed to do. Anywho, we'll bring it back in a little bit when we get a little more progress done on it. I'll get the other fork and try to start getting it to look like it's a going back together process, but we still got to do the front wheel. I am going to paint it. I'm not going to put it back on looking like, like doo-doo. So, I hope you're enjoying it so far. We'll bring you back. Hey. All right. 
This is what we've got here. I've kind of got it back to this status. It's kind of kind of only a temporary thing maybe, but uh, I know the headlights in there are only temporary. I did polish these bolts up here. Uh, brighten them up the best I could. I polished the rings the best I could. Yeah, it looks so-so, but uh, I forgot to put the rubber piece back in this side because there was no piece in this one. That's why it's more faded in that and here than it is there. So, yeah, the headlight bucket looks like junk. Yeah, so you are sandblast it. Well, I'm not. I'm going to have it powder coated. It ain't nothing to take it off and get it done again. So, whoop de do, you know? But I did get the uh, fork bottoms. Uh, I, I polished them out and whatnot. So I got the triple tree. Man, it's just got smudgy crap all over it. But I did put a new top nut on it and got these cleaned up. The one I hammered on, it's just, it's hammered on. I can't find the one I thought I had to replace it. I got it somewhere. I just got so much junk. But, uh, yeah. Uh, my next thing is I'm going to polish this out. That's going to take me a little bit. You got to be sure to clean the, the holes out. Get your moto tool, the sanding disc, a little drum, and, and sand all that out. And I got to go through all this as well as doing the front wheel. I don't like a whole, much, whole lot, but it's still a lot. But anyway. Little progress report. Catch you later. Okay, okay. Uh, hadn't been doing much, but just putting some more stuff on. Uh, got, I guess, all the wires tucked in the headlight bucket. I don't have them paired up. But uh, I got the front fender straightened out. I still got a little bit of a boo-boo right there, but the best I could do. Uh, looks horrible in the camera, but it looks better out here. But I polished, cleaned the stuff off, and I polished it. I just don't have any cleaner to cut the greasy film off. But, oh, you see all that. Spinometer cleaned up quite a bit. I just got to go back and wipe things down to clear the greasy film off of junk and uh, horns in uh, of course you see both both forks kind of mocked up here and there I had to mock the the front brake cable uh, had to put all that on there excuse me if y'all can't see what I'm trying to refer to uh, yeah, I had to put that on there just so I could get the make sure I got the wires because it's got the brake switch right up here in that black uh, knot, whatever you want to call it. Y'all know what it is. So I decided to put a new speedometer cable on it because the other one I just, it, you know, I was going to use that one unless I find another one that I've set aside somewhere, but for my for my H model, I'll just order another uh, speedometer cable. A lot of ums and stuff right there. So, anyway, uh, I haven't got to that. It's hell, it's after nine o'clock. I've been out here for, I don't know, six hours. Uh, I clean all that up. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty tired, so. Anyway, I'll show you how to get that out, or to make the tool I got to get that out, and we'll go through and fix all this in here, tear it apart, clean it up, re-grease it, uh, take the glaze off the brakes, um, and we'll be doing the front wheel, and hopefully we can get the front wheel back together sometime tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Sunday, 
So sometime or another when I wake up and get busy again, uh, we'll be back out here at it. You know, I think this probably would have, you know, if I'd have had some help out here, it would have been a lot further along, you know, some experienced help. So, uh, for the most part, this thing's turning around. I'm getting closer to the point where, I guess, I mean, you know, I can get the front end done and maybe turn around and just pull the back wheel off and, and blast it and powder coat it. So we'll get all that done and uh, then we could probably move on to doing a little video uh, series and see how fast I can rip, rip that H model, my Emerald Green H, down to bare bones. We can start blasting it. It's gonna be a, gonna be something new, but uh, there's always something. And the one thing I, I found out is I only had one light bulb to, for my indicators on my my headlight, or not my headlight. One bulb for my speedometer uh, instrument setup, so I just put one in the neutral. So I've got to order more of those. I use the LED versions. So, whoop de doo It is what it is. I imagine I'm going to have to do a lot of straightening out on the way things look and are. Uh, I don't know if I have another throttle cable, but I would love to put another throttle cable in it. I might just do it just because uh, I, I, if I got one, I'll do it. And that one, I, I'll show you why. There's uh, stuff like this, these kinks. I mean, it's... When you get something like that, moisture gets down in there and, and it, you know, it could get down into the carburetor. You know, it, it'll just follow itself, you know, from there down. You can get in the carburetor if you wash it leave it outside by accident and it starts raining or whatever but you, you want to make sure all that stuff is sealed up from the elements uh, but I just I, I think that I, I for my own sanity and and stuff I might as well just see if I got another cable and probably need to put this on the inside I don't know why the hell I did it like that but you know We'll, we'll straighten things out. It's not always right the first time, but we'll end up getting it right the time we're done. Makes sense? So anyway, I'm going to go to bed, and uh, we'll come back uh, tomorrow, hopefully, and uh, can carry on. I'm going to go in there and watch a movie with Mama. <sighs> My feet are cold. i got Dearborn's been running out. Out here, see, i got my Dearborn. Now, I got one over there. It's going. I need to adjust that one where it's hotter. But other than that, uh, guys, next time you see me, we'll be out here doing something else. Okay. <laughs> well, it's almost like 24 hours later. It's Sunday. I just had a had a lazy day. I finished up the wiring in the the headlight bucket put the headlight in and ran some brake cables and re kind of redid them cables there so put a clamp back on that uh wire deal i think uh that'll be okay so also i tore down the front wheel yeah it's y'all sick and drowsy okay there's a tire there is the rim halves they've been cleaned not too far back uh, but i am going to sandblast them and there's one you know i want to i want to make this thing a little bit better the hubs aren't too bad i think the bearings are okay i mean i don't know but anyway uh I don't know what I got for bearings. I'll have to dig through the bucket down or a box. Now, I've got boxes over there with all hundreds of dollars of parts, but 
yeah, I'm gonna get these sandblasted and you know, I got nasty bolts. I'll clean them up, maybe paint them. I have no idea what the hell I'm gonna do with them. But anyway, but yeah, I mean, I, well, I could go down to Ace Hardware tomorrow and uh, get some replacement bolts. The nuts, now the nuts are, they're just, they're bigger and diet. You know, the wrench, the wrench flats are bigger than standard size. So if you go down and get a nut to fit these eight millimeter bolts or eight millimeter threaded bolts, uh, the nuts are going to be smaller because I don't, maybe you can see, it's just slightly, the nut's slightly bigger than the head. So usually the, the nut would be the same size as the head in normal circumstances, but for whatever reason, they put them, uh, they got them where you got to put bigger nuts in there. So I don't think I got any bigger nuts. That, well, I might have bigger nuts that are clean in my extra bin down there. But anyway, let me get the sandblast and all that stuff. and See, I can't prime it and paint it. Give you a little update here in a few. Okay, guys, uh, I got the hub and the rim has blasted, wire wheeled, and uh, primed, and the final coat of paint on them. I got the VHT uh, universal aluminum on them, so they're hanging up there on the when the hangers drying so what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip over to this dude and uh, I got a little something special to show you on the brakes but how to get that speed on the deal yeah so anyway. don't lose that and that's a special nut. Get that out of there. A screwdriver and pry that open just a hair. May have to get up under it and pry it off. It's a doozy. The only thing is. Let me reset you up here at the vise. Anyway. Where's my bolt? No, that's not it. This one. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to take these brake pads off. Wham, ba bam. Don't need to be cleaned up. And you got this. Take that out. That'll get wire wheeled. All of this is going to get wire wheeled. Uh, no, I don't know. I get. I guess I can leave my seal in there. I need to get my needle noses and pull that ring gear out. You know, I just grab it by one of the tabs. Pull on. Oh, sh I can't get it off there with a damn bolt in it. <laughs> That'll make it easier. There. And we got that. What you want to do is, is scrape all this grease out and stuff. But what I want to show you is clamp this up no wait 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 something i'm forgetting you're going to take this screw a little brass screw clean the slot out so you can stick a screwdriver in it good pick does the trick
All right, let me get my little screwdriver. Okay. Take, can you see me? There's a little brass screw that you're not going to find one of these anywhere. Like a set screw, and it's it don't have but about two threads on it. Teeth tiny, don't lose a damn thing. So anyway, let me put that into something. Okay, I got me a little little box here. Put it down there and close the lid. I don't want to lose it. Now I just got to remember that's down in there. Now what we got? What we got?
Okay. We got a lot of stuff cleaned up. Uh, I cleaned all this up. I don't even think I need to try to polish it. It just looks too damn shiny. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start inserting the, the gear that goes in here. But first, we want to lube it up before we stick it in. Remember that. Lube it up before you stick it in. Anyway. But anyway, go ahead and grab the gear. I didn't take the washers right there. Uh, just grease the snot out of it. Shove that down in there. Okay. I'm going to clean my hands off for a second. Yeah. And we're going to put that, that gear in there. So, that, not a gear, but the thingy. And you want to make sure that that little uh, drill out spot It's right there where that set screw goes So Anyway That started I think it's lined up Take you take your tool Get it back in there, screw it down on it. It's not turning or nothing. All right, now, gotta grab our little brass set screw we, we stuck in there. Don't wanna lose it. Yep. Pry all the way home. And that's basically how to get that part in. Or, you know, we already, you just got through watching a minute ago how to get all that out. So now putting it back in is just the opposite. So anyway. I just want to take, pack all that with grease down in there. Down in there. I don't have. I got the hubs and stuff sitting up there. They're, they're hanging up there drying. I got to put some of that VHT clear coat on. But uh, I just want to go ahead and take the time to, to grease this up really good. Yes, I'm gonna when I put it together. I'll have to take it out but I'm going to put it all in there and make sure I got enough grease anyway anyway man it was a booger getting all that stuff out from all them years ago they that screw hole I guess is where they they could screw a greaser in it and Give it a couple of shots and go on with it. But, uh, from what I understand is those factories that put these motorcycles together and stuff, they wear white suits. I don't know if they still do, but the thing back in the day was to you wear a white suit putting these motorcycles and stuff together. And, uh, if you get your white suit dirty, then something's wrong. 
I watched a documentary on on the motorcycles. So anyway, wipe off a little extra. Remember, I'm not trying to restore this one at the moment. So we'll just make a rider out of it. Okay, I'm gonna take my other bolt. That's just my, that's a bolt that I bought off of eBay, I guess, and it turned out to be somebody's throwaway. It's got some vice, or crimp marks right there. Somebody putting something crimped it or they squished it right there. It's got three little squares or three and a half little square marks on it. So I get the brake uh, shoes on. I already got them cleaned up, you know, relatively good. Scrubbed them best I could, rinsed them off. I've already somewhat broke the glaze on there. Uh, but anyway, so the springs attached, flats on there. Let it flip over. Little tappy tap goes right in. Alright, ain't much. It's harder getting them off than it is getting it on. So, you know. Whoop de doo. Get the, uh. You know, get the brake arm on. And sometimes, I, you know, you got to have to have it all together. That way you can clock this arm. You got your little recess part cut out. That's going to go towards your axle bolt. There's a dot. Well, evidently, I got the damn dot at 100% out, or 180 out. Now let me see if I can't flip it around. So... The dot's going to go to the outside of the... It's, what it's going to do, it's going to spread the brakes out and it's going to... They're going to come back together, so whoop de doo whoop de doo I say. Now if you want to... Damn bolt is... You want to go through there. There it goes. But you may have to clock that that arm, depending on how much stretch you got in your brake cable. And I see if I put it on there like that, that's just a little off. That's that's the way it should be from the factory, and that's the way I'm gonna kind of go for it right now. If I gotta clock this arm uh, any other way, then we'll just deal with it when we get there. So, yeah, grab my bolt and put that in there. There is, there's a way that it should go in there. This part right here has got more of a radius. I think it, when it was, they just punched it out with their punch presses and stuff and tapped it later or however they did it but you know one side of it's going to go to the in the arm because it fits better you get you get to doing this you'll see what i'm talking about because i, I would pretty well bet that your piece if it's a factory piece it looks just it's going to look the same so i got that run down by hand i'm not going to tighten it I'm not spending a whole lot of time on this. I, uh, I did wire wheel this, but it didn't get the inside of it. So. Anyway, let me, let me rinse that out real quick. I hope I didn't get you an eye. 
This thing had a yellow washer on it. I guess somebody said they put a yellow washer in there at one time. They lost the metal one. They put one of them in there. Yeah, there it is. Filter driver. Just tighten it down. If you want to tighten it too tight, you'll you'll end up blowing out that plastic washer. You wouldn't blow out a metal washer, but you can blow out a uh, plastic one for sure. You'll just make it go like that. But that's pretty much ready to go. I don't have the wheel halves ready to bolt back to the tire, uh, but I did I did slick up the tire and make it uh, presentable. So I don't know. Let me uh, let's take you out of the stand here for a second. Looking at my vice, you know what it is. And I don't know if you can see that, but that's that uh, VHT Universal Aluminum and the primer and all that stuff is VHT. Uh, and I put the clear coat crap on it. So I don't know how it's going to turn out. It may look like doo-doo. I might have to go get it blasted off. But uh, I guess I'd have to let this sit overnight. Uh, I don't want to scratch nothing. I'm not sure how long it takes to set and cure, but, you know, I've got these wheels up, wheel halves here and such, but I've got these. These were powder coated. They're a little bit different. Okay, get that glare off of you. Hold the damn camera right. But those are powder coated. Uh, some kind of aluminum looking crap. But these are a little bit different. It's, I can see it, but I don't know how well you could tell the difference. So, uh, I did clean the axle bolt and the spacer up so we can get all that back together. And I just can't wait to get that front wheel back on there and rolling. Maybe take it for a rip snort, but I would bet that I'd have to do the back wheel first. Take all that crap off and, and do it. Make them look nice and pretty. Nice. Ugly. Okay. Anyway. We'll catch you. Catch you in a little bit. When we get to the... I, I guess we'll... Uh, last thing you'll see is... Uh, the wheel either going together or all the way together that's something uh most of you already know how to do is put a damn wheel together and i got one thing i'm gonna do right these bolts i don't know i may run down there and get me some uh replacement bolts i just don't like them i, I you're not gonna put these these bolts that look like a turd and nice wheels so i want to put some nice bolts and then wheels and make it look nice and proper the nuts i can't do nothing about them i'm just gonna have to polish them up might have to paint one side of them i don't know or just paint them but uh who knows you'll know here in a minute well look at there it is uh the next day so Look at that. we got the wheel painted up and put together. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put this bad boy together. And that goes in there like that. And let's see, let's make a little room here. One thing we got to remember is you want to put this speedometer gear in there like that so you can lay it over 
you know, I don't want to scratch my paint, but, you know, hopefully you can see me up there. This place you break, break drum on it. And, uh, get this thing in place. Make sure that doesn't want to slide out. You got a washer that goes in here on that fork. Now, put the bolt in. Get that started. Now, like I say, I want. I like to put my bolts from the right hand side. That way, you lay the put the back on the kickstand, and it's you're looking at it. You see the nice shiny M cap or the head of the bolt. So it's kind of kind of weird. Let me get up here and hold this thing. I gotta line it all up. Come on! Don't act, don't act stupid. right there. There we go. Like we say, it's always easier with somebody helping. Thanks for your help. <laughs> okay. There's my castle nut. Anyway. And castle nut on it. I guess there was some junk inside of all that. I just you know, we didn't get cleaned out, but damn, what a difference. Let me get that grease off there. But you know, we got it kind of run down to put that brake cable jump back on it. I think I forgot to clean that stuff. I probably did. Yep, it's on here and I forgot to clean it. I need to try to find the newer Wayne retainer there. You know that thing because we we know that that's that's almost flat on the end. So anyway, and I don't I didn't put the brake handle stuff on up there because I didn't know you know well, it's because of getting this all off and on down here is such a pain in the butt. Now, since that's in place, let me go ahead and just get the, yeah, come on, spin on the cable in. Now you want to spin it. There you go. Get up in there. Come on, dude. Work with me. This thing had stopped at 777 miles. That's whenever somebody did the tire change or whatever it was back in the day. It had 777 miles on it and they put it back together wrong. And and knock them uh, ears on it, speedometer gear out of place. And there you go. Well, nothing wrong with speedometer cable or the speedometer itself, but speedometer cable, I feel, was just a little too uh, used up. So I just said, well, I got a new one. I got to make a grocery list of stuff I need to order. And replace. I don't have. I got a few of the cables sitting over there on that swamp cooler. But I think I need to adjust this arm out. That way we can, I can get proper. Because uh, I got that much movement in the brake. I, I, 
that's just too much movement, so I'm going to need to move this out. So let's do that. You got nothing better to do. See, this is another day. I shouldn't ramble on about anything else, but let's clop that up. And so that's that's a little bit too far. I mean, one one tooth on there doesn't, you know, it doesn't seem like much, but down here on this end, yeah. That might be the sweet spot right there. So I'm gonna, it's like maybe a, a tooth, one or two teeth up. Yeah, damn it. Seems like it's always the same. Yep, it'll be good. I'll place that, that nut, that's one of a kind nut. I don't know if you could get a regular hex nut. And down here. Let me get started. Yep. Doesn't take much. So, uh, let's see if I got a, a better one of them. Uh, those, I guess it cam nut, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, there's a good one. It'll take me just a second and have it cleaned up. Anyway, get over here on my wheel. It's only a rider. When it's raining, it's insider. <laughs> Clean that up too. Okay, y'all still in there? Y'all fall asleep. Anyway, didn't take very long to clean that up. Oh, get my big head in the way. You can pull the brake arm one way to just, you know, to get the cable in started. I hope I don't have to tap that hole out. Who knows what it came off of. But, no. Anyway. Uh, I'll keep these things clean for now. I guess they're kind of still curing. But, uh, yeah, we're still recording. But I had to put the, I had to put all this, the little wire guard on. I got to find my screws. Um, I, I got some new ones I'm going to put on. The other ones are just too janky, too rusty. But, you know, it's, uh, only makes sense if you got something better, put something better on it. So. It's coming along. It actually looks like a new motorcycle almost. I mean, considering what the back wheel looks like. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know if I want to bore y'all. I don't know what that red piece means, but anyway, get all these boots in place. This cable here is not all that old. But, you know, I'm going to get all this set up. Uh, I'm going to shut y'all off for a little bit, bring you back after I get a little few things done. I get, get that tightened up, figure out, you know, if I need to uh, tap that hole out in here. It seems like it's a little bit gritty, kind of hard to deal with, but, uh, anyway, I see something I need to straighten up, but that right there, I got to put that nut on correctly. <laughs> 
put the brake handle on. Let everybody else so see y'all in a few minutes. Well, would you look at that? We've got it done. Thanks, thanks to y'all's help and everything. Yeah, speedometer works. Uh, all that's good. I did grease the cable up inside. I yanked it apart and greased it and shoved it back together. Uh, I did re-tap this out and uh, got it working better. Because you don't want to have one of these. It's got a flat, the flat part, the, this part is worn out and flat like this one. So, all that's going to do is going to loosen up and you're not going to have any brakes when you need it. So, you want one of those that's got the good dip dish cup to it so you, it doesn't back off. That's the only thing that keeps it from rattling off is that curvature in, the, in that nut, that T-nut. So, let's see. Got some brakes. So... Got a nice shiny and wheels look delicious anyway I guess we'll uh, let you show let you see what the back wheels look like get you off the stick there's the back one there's the front one much much better so anyway guys I guess uh in the meanwhile, I'll pull this back one apart, and I guess t next time you see it, it'll be all nice and painted and probably put back together. Uh, wow, what a difference. Anyway. All right, guys. See you in a few. All right. Welcome back, cowpokes. It's probably only been a split second for y'all, but... Uh, been several hours for me. Uh, wheels are done. I don't think there's anything else on this bike that I need to do. Other than probably paint it. And probably powder coat the foot peg bracket. Put a, put a decent muffler on it. But for now, it be what it is. Oh, guess what? I found two more... The LED lights that I need to put in the instrument cluster. So, whoop de do, man. And I want to rant and I want to bitch about something. I mean, I don't know. Uh, here's here's what I'm bitching about. Let me get up here. See these tubes with them 90s on the on the valve stems. I don't like using them. Some people, oh yeah, they stick out. Well, yeah, they do. And they're just flimsy. If your tire goes flat, they can suck in there and get get stuck. I like the ones uh, from Trail Buddy because they have the nuts, the threaded valve stem. You could screw the nuts down and put them on there and they stick straight up. And one reason I, I'm pissed off is because I wanted this valve stem on the right hand side. Well, guess what? See how much it's sticking out? Guess what? It was hitting over here. That bottom brake hub, uh, the strut, where the strut bolt's in. It was hitting it. So I said, oh, damn. So I had to take it all apart. Well, not all apart, but to swap the hub around the other way just because of that. But I'm not going to change tubes just because I'm pissed off about it. It is what it is. I'm going to leave it. Anyway. Uh, I don't know about anybody that's out there. I use uh, metric lock nuts on these. So. All that. So. And them tires are made like in the early 90s. And they're made in Japan. They're the IRC trials, so somebody got them somewhere. Or 09, excuse me. And I think 
on the 41th week of 2009. And they're made in Japan. I wouldn't have a China tire on the damn thing. And I couldn't help it, so. Anyway, guys, I don't know. I mean, besides janky exhaust on there, what else do I need to do? But, I don't know. Uh, maybe let's go ahead and get this video uploaded. And uh, let y'all... Has something to watch and entertain yourself while y'all is quarantined with the cornholio virus. So anyway, I guess we'll call the wraps on this when we get loaded up. And uh, man, just do me a favor and hit that like button, and subscribe, share it, uh, do all that good stuff that you need to do that you that you're scared of doing. Just, uh, I mean, keep this, uh, keep these bikes rolling. Another one on the road. But anyway, we got plenty of stuff to do. Look at that, I mean, I got parts. Boots, forks, seals, bearings, clutch packs. Uh, I don't know. If you had to go buy that, you'd have to drop probably a grand. And I got stuff in here. I got a box in a box with stuff in a box in a box. Box over there. Box full of stuff in there. I have no idea. So, yeah. Uh, engine guard. That's going to go on the Emerald Green one back there. So, and there's my. Down in that box is my Emerald Green paint. So, uh all that and there these are some pistons this is a wire hootie hooties covering the things so and cables so anyway guys i just got crap stacked everywhere if you're if you're the kind of guy that does this you probably got the same amount of crap too but anyways guys uh Man, I, I enjoyed you out here wrenching with me on this bike. I mean, y'all been a big he you know, big help. Uh, I appreciate y'all's advice that y'all y'all were yelling at me while y'all sitting there on the toilet watching me or the big screen. Uh, I don't know what else to say, but I'm gonna take this down and I'm gonna rip it up and down the road out here in front of the house, and it's night times. Let's see, see, it's night times. Anyway, good night to y'all, and thanks for uh, stopping by.